Kia ora everyone, we're going through the Timber Trail Practice Assessment and this is for NCA Level 2 graphs, for uh, mainly for 12 calculus classes. I'll give you a chance, pause the video if you haven't read the question or if you're not familiar with it, but task number one, that's all the achieved and merit stuff that you need to do and the generalizations um, of note A comma B is what you're looking to generalize for, that's in task two. So I'm going to flip down, um, pause if you're not quite sure what the question's about. So the start point, we probably need to do a bit of pre-planning before we dive into it too much. Um, and when I'm looking at this, I can see a nice kind of U shape over here. I can see a nice kind of up and down motion here, and I can see another U shape over here. So my initial gut is breaking it into three sections, kind of along those lines, chopping it up. The bottom one, that looks like an easy parabola, so I'm probably going to save my parabola for the last section. The middle section, definitely going to be trigonometry. Obviously, I'm going to justify these in a bit more detail throughout my report. And this last one, a bit up for debate, it could be a few things. It could be a parabola, but I'm not going to use it um, because I'm going to use the parabola later on. But it could be a ne negative exponential graph or it could be a hyperbola. So we've got a few different sections. Um, and let's start off with this section here. I'm going to call this section number one. And I always draw my graph so I can link my answer uh, to the graph a little bit better. So section number one. My first paragraph is probably going to be the merit stuff, and that's when I'm going to link the features of the graph with the context. So that's a really important part of getting excellence. The next section is the achieve stuff. That's going to be the other features that I didn't really mention above. Um, after that, for achieved, I'm going to do the equation, and I need the domain for that. And then finally, over here for excellence, I'm going to need the generalization plus the updated domain for that generalization. So that's my rough plan for all four sections. Um, it's a bit upside down, back and forth with the merit stuff being first, but it is an important thing that we need to follow. So let's start off with a bit of an introductory sentence, something linking the context about the drone. Um, so for section one of the drones flight path um, across the timber trail, or I've written around, let's go across. So Timber Trail, I will use a hyperbola. So I've kind of mentally settled on hyperbola um, for this section. And the, the main reason being an, an exponential graph kind of goes across and it kind of goes down a lot quicker. Whereas a hyperbola, you can make it a bit more rectangular. And I think that rectangular nature matches what I'm seeing here. So the, the main reason I'm using a hyperbola is that the curved, so the curved section looks more rectangular, and I'm going to put rectangular in quote marks. Than a exponential model. Oh, so it looks more rectangular. This means um, an exponential model probably wouldn't be appropriate. This means a hyperbola. Uh, would be more appropriate than a negative exponential graph. Would be more appropriate than a negative exponential graph. Um, the other thing that it's got going for, it, it kind of looks like we've got a horizontal asymptote this way and a negative asymptote 
uh, in a vertical asymptote that way. So that kind of does suit me a little bit more as well. Um, typically what I do for asymptotes is it looks like this is at four. So I'm just going to increase one to five. And this one's at 3.6, so I'm just going to go to 4. So I kind of just skip on over to the next whole number. Um, this is supported by... So it's supported by um, two asymptotes. That the timber trail tends toward. Um, so notice I'm using timber trail because I'm trying to link in the context a bit more. And those asymptotes are, so we've got y equals 4. That's the one going along this way. And then we've got x equals 5. That's the one going down this way. So, and x equals 5. So I think that's a pretty good description of the merit stuff. I've um, I've justified it. Key thing being, it's a bit more rectangular, so that makes me think it's a hyperbola, not a negative exponential graph. And what it's really got going for it is it does look like there's two natural asymptotes here, and, and that helps with that discussion. So the achieve part of this discussion, we then just want to chat about kind of any other features that are kind of relevant and left over here. So um, I guess the first one is we do have a y-intercept. That's the start point. So y-intercept at the start point of 0, 0,3.6. And again, noticing start point, that's something that is from the context of the question. So I'm still integrating in that stuff, even though I'm in the achieve section now. Um, we do have an x-intercept. We're not sure exactly where this is, because this graph, it's hard to control that bit going down. So we're going to have to calculate that later on. But it looks to be around 4. So we've got an x-intercept around 4, 0. Um, I guess the other things to note is prob it's definitely going to be a positive hyperbola. Uh, we know that one there for sure. Um, and that, that really looks out for all the other ones. The last couple that you can chat about for every one is just the domain and the range. So we're not 100% sure about the domain. So domain of approximately so that's 0x to 4. So it's that 4 we're not 100% sure about. Um, and we can also chat about the range. The range we do know because that's range. It's going to be between 0 and 3.6. So that was the wordy part of this conversation. And just noting at this stage here, the domain is the one we're really not sure about. I, I actually don't know where this graph is going to end. I know for sure it's going to go through this point up here. But I don't know what's going to happen down here. So I'm going to need to calculate that short, um, shortly. Let's get to the mathy part. I've just had to delete my merit section to to provide us with a bit more working. Normally the equations are y equals such and such, but remember for a hyperbola, there's a few different ways you could do it. So I'm going to use the rectangular approach. So we're going to have x plus a, y plus b equals c. So the a relates to the horizontal, no, sorry, the vertical asymptote. So that's the asymptote going kind of up and down. And the b relates to the horizontal asymptote. And the c um, we're going to use some algebra to calculate that. So we're going to use algebra and specifically the point or the start point 0, 0,3.6 to get that. So our hor or sorry, our vertical asymptote, we said before, we reckon it's going to go through 5. So that means A is going to be equal to negative 5. Remembering because the number is going into a bracket, it's positive 5 becomes negative 5. And the horizontal asymptote is at 4, so that positive 4 that we've got up the top there, that's going to come negative 4. So b will be equal to negative 4. So our answer, so x will be equal to, or x minus 5 times y minus 4 will be equal to c. As we said before, we've already got our x and our y value to calculate c, so let's plug those in. So we're going to have 0 minus 5. And then we're going to have 3.6 minus 4. That will be equal to C. 
Um, those brackets, negative 5 times negative 0 0.4 is equal to C. So C is going to be equal to positive 2. And that makes sense. Remembering we did say we're going to have a positive hyperbola. So it makes sense that we've got that. So our equation as a result wraps up as X plus A. Oh gosh, I've written A. So it's X minus 5, isn't it? And then we've got Y minus 4. And all of that comes to 2. And at this point here... We need to think of our domain. We've got 0 to x. And we said before it's roughly 5, but we don't actually know exactly where that is. So we, at this stage here, need to stop and calculate what that's going to be. So at, um, let's pretend we're looking at the x-intercept here. So at the x-intercept, we know that y is going to be equal to 0. So what we're going to do is we're going to substitute that into my equation and calculate what the x would have been. And the resulting number is going to be the end of our graph um, for this purpose. So let's plug that in. So we're going to have 0 minus 5. Oh, that's not right. So we're going to have x minus 5. A few little math errors creeping into my work. And then we're going to have 0 minus 4 equals 2. I've only got x left, so that means I can go ahead and solve it. So that means we're going to have, this becomes negative 4. So it's currently times negative 4. So I'm going to go divide by negative 4. So we've got x minus 5 equals negative 1 half. I'm now going to go plus 5 to both sides. So we've got x is equal to positive 4.5. And that there now gives us our domain. So we're going to write that up here at positive 4.5. So we know our actual graph. It goes down and down and down. And it probably goes a little bit extra. And then it stops over here at 4.5 comma 0. And that's going to be the start point of our next section, which is probably going to be a trig graph. So we've done the merit stuff. So just a reminder, the merit stuff was the stuff originally written here. The achieve stuff was the stuff I just got rid of. And then all of this working here was to kind of back up the achieved equation. And following this, we're now going to do the generalization part. And if you remember from the question, the charging hub is currently over here at 0, 0. However, we've been told um, this may change. It may end up at a random point A, B. So if you think of the context, A relates to kind of any horizontal movement because it's along the x-axis and Y relates to any vertical movement. So generalization, so let's say let x equal... Um, unknown horizontal movement of the charging hub. And same thing, B, oh sorry, Y, oh gosh, I'm using X and Y, I'm not having a good day. That there is A, and that there is B. Um, so that B is going to be the unknown vertical movement. of the charging hub so forgive the typos and all that sort of stuff in that section so this one here is quite easy i think so this five that we've got up here that five instead should be five plus a because it's going to be moved horizontally um, this four that's going to be four plus b instead so you see these changes and then our domain is changing with those a values over here so let's um let's make that change so let's write this all down so we're going to have x minus 5 that's the current one but that 5 needs to be 5 plus a so what we're going to do is we're going to subtract 5 plus a instead um, notice i had to put in brackets because the whole thing has to be negative not just the 5. we're then going to do the same with the y value so it's currently y minus 4 but that needs to be 4 and the b as well so let's add on our extra set of brackets so that's going to be 4 plus b and that there will still be equal to 2 so it hasn't changed the you know the rectangular nature of it hasn't changed that 2 won't change and as a result the domain is going to change that's going to be 0 plus a so we need to increase it by a which is the horizontal um, movement and that needs to be in line with x and then it's going to be 4.5 plus a 
over here as well. So you'll see the whole window is going to move left and right as A changes. We don't need B in the domain because that's the up and down movement. That's related to the range, not the domain. So that's the last part of this particular section. So that wraps up all four bits that you need to have to get excellence for section number one. So we're now into section number two. Um, let's just write my heading and I'm going to use blue for section number two. Um, and just a reminder, we're going to follow the same section. We're going to have the merit discussion first. We're going to have the achieved discussion. We're going to have the achieved math. And then we're going to have the excellence generalization at the end. So we're following that same four step approach. Hopefully I don't run out of room this time around. Um, so as I mentioned in the intro to this video, this next section, it kind of winds up and down, up and down, up and down like a trig graph. Um, so as long as it's close, see that little gap there between our endpoint and the trail, as long as it's close-ish to the trail, um, we're going to be okay. So you can see this maximum here is actually really close to our endpoint. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start our new graph kind of over there at the endpoint. And I like that because it means the graphs are continuous. They flow exactly onto each other. And we can see another maximum over here. Uh, this one's a bit harder to see, but let's um, that's roughly at 7,0. So that's a really nice whole number, so that'll make it easier to calculate. And the next thing I like is I can kind of see a minimum here, and that's roughly in the middle of these two maximums. So I'm going to use the middle of the maximums to help me with this. Um, and this number kind of roughly in the middle is going to be over here. And that point there is actually... Um, 5.75 comma negative 2. So you can see the negative 2 there, and it's not quite 5.5, not quite 6, but it's in the middle of those two. And from that, I've got a little trig function here, and it goes up, and then it goes down. So you can see every point of my graph, it's pretty close. Not perfect, but pretty close. And then after that, we're going to just do a parabola to finish it off there. So that curved cosine graph because we're going to be using some maximums is what we're going to use um, so we're going to call this here section two. Well, that's not got not got enough room section two okay so we're going to start into that so for section two of the drones proposed flight path so we've got proposed um, flight path along the timber trail. Again, I'm using context drone timber trail to get across my point. Um, I think a cosine function, so a cosine graph, will be best. So I've said it's using cosine. I now need to back it up. And I guess the key part of the context that's relevant is that trail in this section is really wave-like, and that's what a trig graph is. And the other thing that it's got going for it is I can see some maximums and some minimums, or a lot of turning points, and that's another feature of a trig graph. Um, so we're going to say section two of the drone's flight is and I'll put it in quote marks, it's wave-like, isn't it? Which looks like a cosine graph. Um, this is backed up by... So backed up by multiple turning points... At, so what was that? 4.5 comma 0, that was the endpoint. And then we had our minimum, so it was 5.75 comma negative 2. And then finally the last maximum, that was at 7 comma 0. So I think the fact it's wave-like and it's got multiple turning points, that for me, slam dunk, that's going to be a trig graph. So the next part, that's the merit stuff. The next part, let's chat about the other relevant features. And this is kind of to wrap up the achieved mark. And for trig graphs, um, the amplitude is really important. 
So we've got an amplitude of, so you can see the whole graph is one, cut, so the whole graph is two, cut that in half, that's one. So we've got an amplitude of one. We've got a period, that's how long from start to finish. So that there's probably going to be the difference between the maximums. And in our case, that's seven minus 4.5, so that's going to be 3.5. So a period of 3.5. Um, it's got a center line of y equals negative one that's important because that tells us about the vertical shift of our graph and then finally you know this first maximum that should have been over here on the y axis or the y intercept so that's been shifted over by 4.5 units um, so that's our horizontal shift of 4.5 to the right so all of that there that wraps up kind of the discussiony part of it we now need to get into the math part of it so let's start off with by writing my model so my model y is equal to a cosine and we've got b x plus c plus d and then don't forget that you'll need your domain afterwards as well so the amplitude we already knew about that so a is equal to one so that's going to be invisible because times one b this one's going to be a bit annoying this is going to be 360 over 3.5 um, when you simplify that it's going to get quite messy in terms of decimals so i'm going to simplify the fraction as 720 over 7 um, that's what b was equal to c that's my horizontal shift it moved pos to positive 4.5 so that's going to be negative 4.5 and d that's going to be negative 1. so from all of that i can create my model so y is equal to cos and that's going to be 720 over 7 x minus 4.5 and then we're going to have minus 1. So that's the trig equation we're looking at. Don't forget about the domain. That's between the two maximums at 4.5 and 7. So let's get that domain down. 4.5 and 7. So that's saying x is between 4.5 and 7. Greater than 4.5, less than 7. So that wraps up the model part of it. So just noting before we move on to the generalization. In section 1, we checked the end point. We do not need to check the endpoint here because we already know it's at the exact maximum. We stopped it at seven, um, and that's because of the features of a trigonometry graph. So we know for sure where it's going to end up. Whereas in the previous section, we didn't exactly know where that hyperbola was going to end up. So my final part, the E stuff, the generalization. And then carrying on from the previous question, we know that A was equal to the horizontal movement. and b was equal to the vertical movement. I'm just being a bit lazy here. I'm not writing those out in full sentences because I've already talked about it in my previous section. So just a reminder, the horizontal movement is based around this 4.5. So that 4.5 is gonna become 4.5 plus a, and the vertical movement's at the end, so that's gonna be negative one plus b. So our equation, y is gonna be equal to cos so the amplitude is not changing the period 720 over 7 that ain't changing but the vertical or the horizontal movement is going to change first so let's go 4.5 plus a um that gets pretty messy you see we've got a triple bracket involved and then we're going to have minus 1 plus b we don't really need brackets in this section the way the math works um, the other thing to note is the domain's also changing. That domain also needs to move left and right as the horizontal movement of A changes. So my horizontal movement, so that's going to be 4.5 plus A, and then it's got 7 plus A as well. So you can see, like the other question, we've got the horizontal movement and the domain being impacted by the A values, and we've got the vertical movement being impacted by the B values. So that wraps up section two of my equation. We are now moving on to section number three, and I'm going to use green pen for this section. And as I mentioned in my planning phase, so far everything's gone, um, gone as planned. However, sometimes it doesn't and you need to adapt. Um, so let's see if the trig graph 
oh, the, the parabola at the end. So our parabola is generally going to follow this downwards. It's going to turn over here at some point, and hopefully it's going to be near that finish line. Um, again, so because we're going to be using the vertex method here, I know for sure it's going to go through the vertex over here. I'm going to use this x-intercept over here as my kind of my x and y value. So I know for sure it's going to go through there. So that means I can't control this finish point. And because the finish point has to be within 0 0.2 of that coordinate, which I think was 10, negative 3.2, I might have to redo this a few times to get this to work. So it will be a bit guess and checky, but it is what it is. So let's kind of get rid of all that stuff and let's start our discussion of this. So we, we're going for the parabola. So I think the drone for section number three, which is what we're calling this one, I think it's going to look like a parabola as it follows through that. So section three of the drone's flight path. Forgive the messy handwriting. Um, has a domain of, um, so it's starting at seven. And we want it stopping at 10. So we know for sure it's going to stop at 10 because we have to stop at 10. It's the Y value that we're not really sure about in this case. So we know the domain for sure, but the Y value we're not 100% sure about. Um, so this section resembles a parabola. Forgive my bad spelling if I've got any wrong. So this section resembles a parabola. Um, it has a vertex of um so what's that so that's nine and negative four isn't it so of nine and negative four and parts of it looks symmetrical parts of it looks symmetrical Um, so because of this, definitely a positive parabola. A positive parabola is going to be the best model for section three. Because of these features, a positive parabola will be best for section three. So that's kind of my merit stuff. I've linked it to context. I've justified it using the key features of a parabola, which typically is that symmetry and the location of the vertex in this case. Sometimes the x-intercepts, but we can't see the second one. So the other relevant features. So other relevant features that we haven't mentioned before. I should probably mention um, the line of symmetry. Um, and that's kind of going through x equals negative 4. And by what I mean by that, it's kind of this bit symmetrical. Obviously, this bit up here is not symmetrical because we don't have the other half of it on the graph. Um, what else is happening? We can see um, the x-intercept. That's going to be important because that's going to be one of the features. x-intercept of 7, 0. We can see it's a positive parabola. That's 100% for sure. Um, I've actually already mentioned that, so I probably don't need to mention that. And I can see an approximate endpoint. So we've got approximate endpoint at 10, negative 3.2. And that was set in the question. And just a reminder, that has to be that plus or minus 0 0.2 criteria. So we know for sure it's going to be at 10 because we've set our domain for 10 but we're not sure about the y value at this stage. So let's get into the math behind this one. So we've got y is equal to ax plus b all squared plus c. So my horizontal movement is, so it's moved all the way up to positive 9, so that means b will be equal to negative 9. 
and my vertical shift has gone downwards by negative four. So that gives me my B and my C values. So we've got Y is equal to A X minus nine squared minus four. My start point up here was seven comma zero. I'm going to use those as my X and Y values to go ahead and calculate A. So we're going to have zero equals A, and then we've got seven minus nine squared minus four. So that means four equals four A, A equals one. So that's nice. It's actually a unstretched parabola. So that's really nice. So therefore my equation, Y is equal to, and then we've got X minus nine squared minus four, and the domain unchanged, that's between seven and 10. So the last thing we need to do, and we're going to try to fit it in this gap kind of here, is we need to make sure that end point, because I know it goes up here, but I don't actually know where it stops, does it end at the right point? So we need to check end point. And at the end point here, we know that x is going to be equal to 10. So we're going to substitute that into our equation. So we're going to have y is equal to, um, so it's going to be 10 minus 9 squared minus 4. So that's going to be 1 minus 4, which is equal to 3. And 3 is really, really good. That's within the 0 0.2 limit that we mentioned. Sorry, that should have been negative 3. So based on this, that is... Um, within the plus or minus 0 0.2 discussion. So we're going to chat about this in a bit more detail as I rub out my kind of merit and excellence, or so my merit and achieved analysis over here. But let's chat about this part here before we move on to our generalizations. So our end point of section three is at um, 10 comma negative 3, this is within the plus or minus 0 0.2 um, allowance. So that just kind of wraps up that. So we've, we've definitely got it for sure. Just to note, if you, if you know this was maybe outside the allowance, what you could do is you could think about moving the vertex up slightly could think about moving it down slightly just to kind of mess around and try to get a different answer um, one that hopefully went through that point okay so what we're going to do is we're now going to do our last part of this project the generalizations for this particular section so we've got the generalization and again same thing we're going to let a equal to the horizontal movement and b is equal to the vertical movement and again because I chatted about this in a previous section, I'm being lazy and I'm writing horizontal and vertical. If times are good in your internal, maybe write down the full sentence, but let's not bother about it. So my full equation, don't forget, is over here. Um, I'll write this down up here so we can see it a bit better. So we had x minus 9 squared minus 4, and it had a domain between 7 and 10. So just a reminder, the horizontal movement and both parts of the domain, that changes by A, and the vertical movement changes by B. So let's get into that. So my generalization, Y will be equal to X minus, don't forget of the extra set of brackets, that's 9 plus A squared minus 4 plus B. So I've added in the horizontal movement, I've added in the vertical movement for my equation, and then we're going to do the horizontal movement. So we've got A plus 7 x 10 plus a and that last part there that's our third and final generalization so that means we would have got an excellence so just a reminder for achieved we had the you know the features of each section and we had its equation plus domain for merit we linked it to alter context and then for excellence, we did our generalizations plus the domains as well. So hopefully you can see how you can build up your answer from achieved to merit.
So the last thing I want to do, and I'm going to have to pause the video and switch on over to Desmos, I want to show you what exactly these generalizations mean um, so you can visualize what's happening. I'm on Desmos and I've already entered in all of the equations. So you'll see the red, green, and purple over here. Um, oh, sorry, that purple is actually irrelevant, isn't it? So red, green, black, that relates to the graph and that roughly followed the timber trail. That was our model that we chatted about. And I've entered in my generalizations down below. And what I want you to see is if I move A, A related to the horizontal movement, so you'll see my whole drone flight, all three sections are moving along back and forth as A changes. So that means you've done it right. And there's zero changes to any of the sections as we do this. So that means we're all sweet. And B, um, in the internal, we set it related to the vertical movement. So if I slide B across, you'll see the whole section moves up and down unchanged. Um, with that, and you can see the domain is changing with it as well. So that's what the generalization does. So ours definitely works, which is nice. So when the teacher goes through and marks this, they're going to be, it's a bit annoying, but they're going to be typing in every answer you have. They're going to be putting into Desmos, and they're going to be messing around with the generalizations to do that. And if you wanted another way to check if you're right, if you put zero for each of them, that means there's been no movement. So that should match your original graphs that you have. So that wraps up this excellence video on the Timber Trail Graphs video. Um, hopefully you found it really, really useful. Um, if you've got questions, hit me up in class, ask your teacher in the comments. I'll try to reply when I can. Thanks so much for watching.